All right, Chase, so going back to LA, the last two trips, UCLA in 2019, uh, USC in 2020, didn't necessarily go to plan. How do you guys, with such a large group of guys from the LA area, go there and be stay focused and keep, keep on task? Uh, I mean, I really just, I think we're just too focused to let any distractions come in, come in, in between us and our goal. And, uh, you know, you know, more than half of our team is, is from L.A., but at the same time, you know, I feel like I said, like, we got some unfinished business out there. We've lost a couple times that we've been out there. So, you know, the game plan is just to go win the game and have fun doing it. You weren't available for the Colorado game. Tamarcus obviously missed <coughs> the first three games of the year. Um, what have you seen from the young guys at the corner position to in, in their jobs stepping up? Uh, they, they've done a really good job. Uh, T6, um, uh, Tamarcus, of course, you know, being out for three games and coming back playing a great game, that's a big, huge deal. A lot of the guys, man, they just, they just, they're locked in and they know they're going to have the opportunity to play. It's not like, you know, all of us, like our whole starting defense hasn't been able to play together in one game. So when you think about that, it's just in how successful we've been and how more successful we can be when everybody gets healthy and back in order and stuff. But at the same time, man, it's like, like the young guys, they know that they're going to have to play. So they got to look at things differently. And I know that as an older guy, as a captain of the team, I got to push them to, to, to be at their best, to watch the film that they need to watch. And, do everything that they need to do. So how are you missed a game? I haven't. Yeah, I haven't missed a game. That was the crazy thing. It was just, um, I took my shot, you know, uh, I don't know, he, he kind of tried to jump over me and then it just kind of hit my head. But <clears throat> I was trying to play. I was really trying to play, but like, you know, the concussion protocol things you got to just go through. But I'm back this week, uh, healthy, and I'm, I'm ready to go rock and roll, man. When you came off the field, you ran off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Back in back in my Chandler days, uh, Eric Richardson, who was my running back coach, he always said, like, don't never, you know, lay on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Don't let them see how you are. And at first, like, it took me a minute to, like, understand what was really going on. Like, I knew, like, my head was hurting. But, like, uh, Jerry went out there and he asked me what was going on. And I was like... I was like, did somebody hit me? Like, what happened? He was like, no, he got your head. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to get up and run off the field. I don't know. That was just the one thing that just popped in my head. Get up and run. Your trainers probably weren't happy. About no, that. yeah, they weren't. They came over there, like, telling me, like, don't do that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> let it go to TV timeout or something like that. And I was just like, nah, bro. I just, I'd rather feel good about me getting up at least than just being down there and like, ah, oh, nah. You know what I mean? So it was a cool, it was, it was cool. I just... It was actually really dope to watch the game, man. I really like. I really enjoyed watching my defense ball out and the whole team ball out and get the win. Do you see a different perspective when you're looking? Because it's been so long since you were on the sidelines not playing. Yeah. It was it a whole different perspective for you? It was, but it was a good perspective. I liked it. I really uh, enjoyed the time that I had, you know, and interacting with the fans, interacting with my teammates and stuff like that. It was cool. It was a cool thing, but I'm, I'm not doing it no more. That, that, it was a one-time thing. And, I'm glad that thing's over with, so I'm about to about to go ball out for the rest of the year. It's only October, so I mean, every game is big. But you've been around long enough to realize that hey, some games are, are more important than others. Does yeah. this game feel this way? Of course, man. It's, if we would have beat BYU, we would have been on national television, probably prime time, nine o'clock, something like that. And that that's the thing that hurts. But at the end of the day, like we, like you said, man, it's, it, it's the next game. But this game's a big game for us. You know, we need to go take the Pac-12 South and. Uh, go do the things that we're destined to do and everything that I to try to promise this community and this and this team that we're going to do. So I think we're in a great position. Pac-12 is wide open, so we got to go get the job done. In your career at ASU, you've seen a, plenty of different quarterbacks, but to be able to have the recollection of two different matchups with DTR, what does that kind of give you a head start on for this week? He's a great player, man. He's also a friend of mine, so like every time I see him, it's always love with him. Uh, I think it's going to be a really good game, man. I know that he's going to do his, his due diligence, and I am too. And uh, I know that he's, I, I know that they're going to go out there thinking they're going to run the ball. So, and I feel like a whole lot of teams thought that. So we put a, we put a real end to it, especially in the beginning. But towards the end, it was kind of hard. So. I've always talked about finishing, but I mean, uh, starting up, but now we got to finish it. But at the end of the day, I know DTR is looking at the back end like, oh, where, who am I going to throw the ball to? Where am I going to get these pockets? Where am I going to get these plays? So uh, I, I, I think that we're ready for him, and I, I know he's going to get prepared for us. What makes him challenging, Chase? He's he's good players. He's two and zero against ASU. What have been the main challenges defending? But his legs, his legs are incredible. You know what I mean? He's like a running back. There's two running backs on the field at all times, maybe three or four depending on the packages. 
but uh, he's a great he's a great runner. But at, at the same time, he makes good decisions and he's a good leader. So, uh, I, you know, even though he's on the opposite side of the teams, man, I still got mad love and respect for him. And um, I know that you know he's gonna be ready to play us just like we're ready to play him. And obviously, he's tough to take the hit that he took and then get back to stay in the game. Yeah, exactly. Last week. Yeah. No, he's a tough dude. I know, like, you know, dudes. With, He's a senior, man. Like, we've played back when there was <laughs> double practices and all that. So, like, you know, when you – it's starting to get – I want to say it's starting to get a little bit softer. But, you know, when I see dudes like that, like, they're they're grimy, they're gritty, and they know, you know, that they need to do everything they can to get the job done. So Outside of DTR, what are you seeing that stands out from UCLA's offense? Shoot, Kyle Phillips, their, their, their uh, O-line is very, very good, man. They're big dudes that can work together. Uh, they do a lot of different things, a lot of uh, – pull stretches and stuff like that that we haven't seen before. So, but we're ready, man. Uh, other than that, Kyle Phillips, man, he's a great, he's a great uh, wide receiver. Uh, I've played against him a couple times, so I kind of know how he is and you know what he likes. And I know that Chip Kelly loves to loves to get him the ball. So, um, hopefully, you know, me and him get to line up against each other and and, and, and see what's really good with the passing game. <laughs> How about, how about their tight end, Dulcich? Yeah. He averages like 25 yards. 85 and 2, man. Those are the two guys that we got to – oh, 24 and 1, man. Those, those are the guys that we really need to lock in on this, in this, in this year, this game. Does it, how does it feel to have all the frontline DBs back? You, you're back. DeMarcus is back. Everybody's ready to go. I'm excited. It's going to be a good game, man. I, I know that everything's going to be right where it needs to be, and we're going to – we're you know, AP's going to make the calls that he needs, he needs to make, and – I think everything's gonna be, it's gonna go good in our favor, and then we just gotta finish, man. That's the biggest thing this year, man. Or this game is just finish. You got hurt. Uh, you came off the field at halftime. You were in there. Mm -hmm. In the second half, you stayed in the locker room. Right? Yeah, they made me. What do you do, bro? I had to get, I had to go on streamy live and pull up the game, bro, because I couldn't. <laughs> they wouldn't let me uh, go back into the game because they said that the noise and all that. But I'm like, bro, come on, like, like let me, I gotta go support my teammates. So they lied to me, they lied to me. They were telling me, they were like, okay, we're gonna come back in and evaluate you. And I'm like, okay. Third quarter happened, they never came back. I'm like, oh, they got me, I'll take that one. So, but it, uh, I was just mad I, wouldn't, I wasn't be able to get out there. I was really mad I got hurt, bro, cause that, but it was something I had to just, you know, take to the chin. And I'm just happy that, you know, my team got that W last week or I would have been very depressed. Very, very depressed. So you had to like call up on your on a laptop or something, or I <laughs> it was on my phone, man. I literally <laughs> had to, and the and the connection was terrible. So like, <laughs> like I remember when Merlin got the interception. It was like, oh, Merlin got the, and I throw the phone. I'm like, oh my god, you know what I'm saying? And then it like froze, and then I was like, oh, like we got. Then next thing you know, it popped up. It was like, look at this play from 25, and he punched in the ball out. And I just remember like screaming in my head, you know what I mean? And the doctors were like, you got to stop that. So, but it, it was it was a very it was a very intense moment on my end. But at the end of the day, we, we took the L. It is what it is, and we came back and, and, and responded in a good way. So that was the thing I was happy about. Can I give you? Nah, 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 nothing like that. I was actually pacing back and forth, and they were trying to tell me like, sit down. I'm like, nah, bro, I can't. There's too much on this game right now. I can't do that. Let me give you a clue. Download the Arizona Sports app on your phone. You can listen to us from anywhere else. <laughs> wow, there we go. Hey, hopefully I don't have to do that no more. That's the one thing. Hopefully I hear it after the game. Uh, but before, during, I, I don't know, Tim. I might be hot. Right? I might be throwing my phone everywhere. But, okay, but you, okay, you've been around longer than most of the guys in here. It, mm -hmm. I don't want to say it means more to you, but I mean, this, this is it for you. Yeah, uh, yeah. How, how do you kind of, or do you need to kind of show or tell, like, let everybody know how big this moment is, or do they already know? No, they know. Everybody knows, especially with me. Like they, they know I don't play that. I'm not. I'm not one of the guys that takes games lightly. I go out there, I practice my ass off, and I try to simulate a game. You know what I'm saying, kind of. And and I think that the guys just follow me. You know what I mean? They they show my. Uh, they see my intensity. Yeah, I'm a cool guy. Like I'm a laugh and joke with you. But when, the, when it's time to play the ball, I'm I'm ready to play. And I love the fact that the guys are seeing that and actually taking it. Uh, into their own ways, you know, into their own practice habits and stuff like that. That's, it makes me feel good, man. It makes me feel like a real, like a real good captain, a real good big brother. Like I'm teaching them, and then everything that they do on the practice field, they do in the game. So I'm, I'm just happy to be able to mentor them and, and, and try to just show everybody how I took take the game. And, 
much showing off. Were you able to talk to him before the Colorado game at all as a captain? Uh, I didn't want to. You know what I mean? Uh, I didn't end up traveling or nothing like that. I just wanted them to just kind of just be there. And you know, before I, when I got there, I was just going up to my guys and going up to J Five and all the offensive dudes and just telling them like, you know, this this big game for us. And every time they they, they always tell me like, yeah, I got you, Cap. Like they always call me Cap. So. I, when I knew that was on and I saw them walk out, but I knew it was game over. So I, I was I was really really happy, dog. Really happy. Yeah. Do you feel, do you feel good now? I, man, I felt good on Saturday. I was trying to tell them like, is there any way like child where I could get in? Like nah. So, but I feel great, man. Everything's good. My body feels fresh. My head feels even better, and I'm ready to go get this W. Great. Thanks. Thanks.